So welcome. And if you are just visiting this morning, either here in your corporeal form or in your electron form out there on the internet, welcome. If this is your home, welcome to you as well. I am Pam, and we're going to get started here in just a moment as we set the tone musically. Can we start with the music quiet?
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, and now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. The servant said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear saying, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will make me, will only make successful the way I am going. I'm standing here by the spring of water, but the young, one, but the young woman who comes out to draw to whom I shall say, Please give me a little from your jar to drink. And who shall say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. And she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink and I will also water your camels. So I drank 
and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethul, Nahor's son from, from Michal, bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and, whisper, and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebecca and said to her, will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebecca and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, may you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Berlehorai and was settled in Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, it is my master. So she took veil and covered herself, and the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into her mother's Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer that I do it. It is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. 
So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and we did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. 
Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Aren't those wonderful words? I learned them when I was a little child. I learned them because they were said at every service of Holy Communion, right after the confession and absolution. Some of you may remember them from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. A few of you, because I know, I can look at you. But they're still there in right one of Holy Eucharist. Here's how they went when I was a child. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Well, as a child, I never really understood the word travail. But I absolutely heard Jesus' words as comfortable words. And I took them to heart. I heard Jesus saying to me, put your hand in my hand and all will be well. And you know what? I still believe that. If I put my hand in the hand of Jesus, all will be well. And these words of Jesus still bring me great comfort. I am so glad that they were engraved on my heart, etched on my mind, and buried deep in my soul. I've needed them as I've faced personal challenges and transitions, as I've experienced disappointments, failures, and loss, and as I've watched people I love suffer. However, as I grew up, I gradually realized that there is much more to belonging to Christ than comfort. The Christian religion is not, as Karl Marx said, the opium of the masses. Putting our hand in the hand of Jesus doesn't automatically make everything right. It surely does not take away suffering, our own or the world's suffering. Life continues to be hard. It continues to be unjust. Putting our hand in the hand of Jesus does not spare us from heavy burdens. And that's not what Jesus meant. During the past three Sundays, the gospel readings have been from the 10th chapter of Matthew, where Jesus is sending out his disciples with these warnings and instructions. I'm going to read just a few of them, and I'm going to use Peterson's translation of the Bible because I love how easy it is and how wonderful the words are. He says, stay alert. This is the, to the disciples. This is hazardous work. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourselves, but be as shrewd as a snake and as in, <coughs> inoffensive as a dove. You remember these words if you were here. Don't buy, be naive, he says. Some people will question your motives. Others will smear your reputation just because you believe in me. And then when people realize it is the living God you are presenting and not some idol that just makes them feel good, they're going to turn on you, even people in your own family. This is hard stuff, isn't it? Hard stuff. Discipleship is not easy. It demands our all. God's reign comes with a price, 
And all of us who are committed to Christ, who've put our hand in Jesus' hand, bear the cost. All of us are called to take up the cross. We must go beyond serving ourselves and our own. We must turn outward and confront the injustice we see towards so many people. The indifference to the poor, the hatred and prejudice that marginalizes so many people. We cannot close our eyes to these things. Jesus did not close his eyes to these things. If we do, we're no better than those who rejected Jesus. But now, I want to go back to the beginning of today's gospel. Jesus is speaking to the crowd about his own rejection and the rejection of John the Baptist. Jesus compares the people in power, in this case, the religious authorities, to children who pay no attention to each other. He says, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We wailed. You didn't mourn. Jesus then goes on to tell the crowds how blind and fickle their leaders are. He says, John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In other words, neither Jesus nor John met the approval of the religious leaders. Neither Jesus nor John fit into their way of thinking about the kingdom of God. John was too harsh, Jesus too brazen and joyful. You see, the religious leaders, the people who were in power, were threatened by a social and economic order that would, not, that would ease the burdens of the poor and downcast. They were threatened by a social and economic order that made everyone has what they need, have that they need to live healthy and full lives. The people in power, those on top, were threatened because all they could see was loss for themselves. And you know what? That hasn't changed a whole lot, at least for many of our leaders today. Look at Congress. Anyway, after all this, Jesus turned his attention to the very people who could have been a threat to these leaders, the poor, the victims of injustice, the sick, the marginalized, and he said, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus said. Walk in tandem with me. Put your hand in my hand. Let me show you God's compassion. Let me share the weight that is on you. Let me teach you God's ways. Doing so will not only lighten your burden, but bring you joy. It makes you want to sing and dance. It calls each of you, no matter how rich or poor you are, to use your best gifts and talents for the fulfillment of God's purpose. So come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. I love those comfortable words. And I am so glad they became part of me as a child. They have helped me face so many things in my life with hope and courage. However, I would not say them again without the second part, 
take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Being a Christian is not just about comfort. It's not just about being with God in the sweet by and by when we die. It's about bringing the reign of God to earth. And that requires wearing Christ's yoke, not just leaning on him, but learning from him and participating in kingdom building work. It requires open eyes, open ears to see those who are carrying heavy burdens. It requires a compassionate heart as God is compassionate and it requires ready hands and feet. A willingness to share what we have so that all may have abundant life. Amen. Let's affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten of one made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and the same man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious Pilate, who suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin. Please let us stand and face each other across the aisle. Come to prayer, all who labor and are heavy laden, and God will give us rest. We thank you for the revelation of your gift of abundant life and for the rest coming to those who put their trust in you. For such life and rest, We thank you for entrusting us with the message of grace that we might speak a reconciling word to our age. For such mercy. We thank you for leading us into the ways of peace and for transforming weapons of war into tools of charity. For such peacemaking. We thank you for the people of faith who surround us and for the family and friends, teachers and clergy who assist our growth in grace, for such companions through life. We thank you for the gifts of creation and for wholesome times of recreation, for such times of harmony. We thank you for those who tend to the sick, accompany the frustrated, visit the lonely, comfort the dying, confront the addicted, or minister to any in need, remembering Lucy Marshall, Vince Marsiglia, Shirley Nathan Pulliam, Larry Brown, Sandra De Silva, Mary Warfield, Phoenix DeVale, Irene Hardy, Stephanie Brooks Wiggins, T. John Coxon family, Tim Wolfe, 
Zach Dana and Zoe Shebashevsky, Mary Lou Freilich, Vicki Lynn, Debbie McClellan, Bryce Casper, Barbara Hoy, Verna Harrison, Kate Henshaw, Dorn Wagner, Mercedes Hill, Janet and Bates Churchill, Cam Trowbridge, Eleanor Holland, Helen Langa, Yana Anderson, Deirdre McElroy, Thelma Smullen, Charles Tucker, 40 West Assistance and Referral Center clients, the unhoused, and any others we name at this time. Brian and Nathan Gardner, Lynette West, Warren Coyland, for such attention to human anguish, we thank you for sustaining all who are oppressed, all who suffer for reasons of conscience, all who are passionate for justice, for such signs of the coming kingdom. We thank you for all the ways in which you so richly bless your people. Remembering the 21st wedding anniversary of Tom and Daphne Cover, the baptismal anniversary of Miles Anthony Whitaker, the 51st wedding anniversary of Debbie and David McClellan, the 88th birthday of Willis Keeling, the birthday of Elizabeth C. Sullivan, the 14th wedding anniversary of Christine and Jason Benkoski, the 26th wedding anniversary of Kathleen and Margaret Chateau, and any others we name at this time. Give thanks for Marty Clark's ministry to the youth, in particular this last week for the EYE. I give thanks and thank you to our diocese in Maryland and Teddy Clinton's youth in Durham and Ryan. The Ted Davis. Thank you for joy in our blessings. We thank you for assuring us that those we love place with you, remembering John Richard Burley II, George Van Velser Wolf, and any others we name at this time. For your loving your kindness, kindness to us all. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Kneeling or standing, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now first, the people in the ether, the peace of God be with you always. Amen. 
and all of us here. Peace. Peace, peace, everyone. 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 Peace, everyone.
Um, it'll say in the profile that we had that we did this, and it would be really nice if the candidates for rector could say, look at all the people in that congregation who took the time to do this. So that's the other side of why it's important. And so if you haven't, I just, this is the old interim speaking. I can't help it. <laughs> and I would just more. also add that if you haven't done it, one easy way to do it now, one easy way to do it now, if you haven't, is that there are paper copies in the tower room. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes. You could just take a copy, come back in here, nice and air conditioned, and fill it out, and put it in the, the box that's right next to the, the forms, um, and we'll pick them up. So I think you get the message on that. Now, uh, before we descend into um, more comical things, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm, um, the, for all, the month of August, um, we're going to have a like just a five week Sankofa circle. Um, Chuck and I have been the um, instigators for this particular Tuesday midday thing for many years now. And we continue to do that because we love to do it and we get so much out of it. So it's a, it's a time for people who are retired, basically, um, because it's 11.45 to 1.15 on Zoom on Tuesdays. But it's a wonderful time to get to know each other better, to share faith stories, to pray with each other, and most of all, to reflect on the Sunday lessons and on the sermon. And so I would just like to say, if, especially if you are fairly new to the parish and you don't know people very well, here's a great opportunity. So it's in the, it's in the um, what's happening. So how to do it, you just gotta let me know you wanna be part and I'll send you the information. Thank you. Okay, now, two other things. First of all, the end of July, the most awesomest of opportunities. If you are going into third grade or eighth grade, or the span in between those, and you like to sing, this is your chance to have three days of total awesomeness, singing, eating, one of my favorite activities, and making some new friends, all under the umbrella of choir camp. Now, who would not want to go spend those days learning from Ted and cohort so please, 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 all the young people you know that fit in that age bracket, I got to tell you, for kids who like music, this is an awesome opportunity. And importantly, for the future of our church, this church has an amazing role to play to bring this most holy of activities into the community. Singing is one of the most amazing gifts of God. So please, register liberally all the kids you know corral them into your minivan bring them here for the 28th the 29th and the 30th of july it is going to be awesome we have more flyers and such out here in the tower room if you have questions you can contact corinne who is the contact for just about everything on the planet she knows lots of stuff Please, please, please talk this up. This is going to be an amazing event. Okay? Please. This is going to be a fabulous camp. This is the second year. Last year was a uh, hoop. It was so much fun. We had 12 kids, three days of fun, and those kids bonded like immediately, and it was wonderful. So um, I would like to ask if anyone would like to volunteer uh, to help out with the camp, that would be wonderful. I can plug you in just for like a task to help with a uh, snack time or to help serve lunch. Or even if you would like to accompany us to a guided um, hike and uh, visit to Leakin Park on Friday afternoon. Um, so, you know, just let me know. We're also asking if you're interested to help support it financially 
to buy lunch and snacks and um, some things to, for the kids to learn how to plant sunflowers. We're gonna be doing that as an activity and ice cream social. So um, if you would like to either volunteer for any point, uh, any of those three days or financially support it, um, you can see myself, Diane Mountain, Ted, or um, Dana Rose. So thanks. Who knows what's happening on September the 9th? I see a few of you now. Would you like to come in? <laughs> you don't want to miss anything good. Was it something you said? He's getting me the microphone. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oops. Okay, what am I? I'm not John Belushi from Animal House. <laughs> Mary Helen? Okay. I'm Mary Helen Sprecher, yeah. Okay, here's, wait, here's another clue. <laughs> Ooh, you're good. All right, okay, it's the other hand. Okay, well, um, I am here to liberate you from clutter. <laughs> liberate you in all parts of your house, in every aspect of your lives. We're here to liberate you from clutter and we could use your help. I am wearing a bed sheet because we're looking for some people to help Judy Sebalaskas in linens um she has been working very hard up there but she's looking for somebody to pass the torch, torch. <laughs> two as she goes uh we're also looking for someone up in clothing to help take control of children's clothing we've had masses of it beautiful things but we need someone to help us put it in order and lastly we also need someone in electronics so um you don't have to work for the nerd herd or the geek squad or whatever those people are you just have to know something about what's current what's outdated what we can toss what we can't that's really all we need help with in electronics uh we could also use you know help with electrical as well and in all departments for that matter. But uh, that's it. Anyone have any questions? Okay, the Statue of Liberty is done. <laughs> not really, not until the 9th of September. Not until the 9th of September, you're right. Okay, before we prepare ourselves for communion, uh, I would like to talk about one other thing, like, uh, most uh, well-oiled machines in this climate, occasionally we need to get a little body work to stay on the road. And so Thelma is going to get a little body work as she heads up to Connecticut uh, and translate it into normal language. She's going to uh, get a repair on her back. And so I think it would be great if we could send her forth with some love and some prayers. So uh, would you pray with me? Is it okay to touch you? Sure. <laughs> I'm just not standing up. That's fine. God of healing, God of love, God of mercy, please bless your daughter Thelma, her medical team, and her family. Give her peace, give her team skill. Give her husband, John, fortitude. Please bless every inch of this journey into healing, rapid recovery, and return of our beloved Thelma to us when she's ready. In the name of your sweet self, amen. Amen, thank you. And now I invite you to walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation, your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. to you, holy and loving God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace, you look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, he took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now, Gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Bartholomew and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation 
to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Share in the one bread. Alleluia. For those at home, let us offer this prayer for our agape meal. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Grant that we who share this food and drink may receive the sustaining life of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold what you are. May you become what you receive, a gift from God for you, the people of God.
Shall we do our prayer of thanksgiving together? In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, wherever that may be, we offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. No matter how we have received you today in our meal of communion, whether by sacrament or otherwise, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us in your grace. Let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, now and always, wherever we are. Amen.
May the God who brings us comfort and conviction hold us close, keep us ever mindful of those that you have sent us to serve, and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you forever. Amen. Amen. As we go forth into the world refreshed and renewed, we reaffirm our commitment to our vision and mission as a congregation. We will, with God's help, be a vibrant faith community that is a blazing beacon of God's transforming love in the world. God is calling us to take righteous risks. We accept this call and will respond by seeking and serving Christ in all things. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Bye, everyone. Have Bye, a great guys. Week. Bye. Bye.